the astounding origin and 57,000 years mind-blowing history of the mysterious ancient Khasi people, a tribe living at the foothills of the Himalayas. Who are the Khasi Jaintia and what is their amazing unbelievable heritage? Read and be prepared to be stunned. History has to be rewritten. The DNA tests on 92 living Khasis by the Genographic Project of National Geographic led by Dr. Spencer Wells and other scientists and confirmed by other DNA tests prove their ancient age at least 57,000 years. The DNA tests should be extended to thousands more Khasis to confirm their real age. As Khasis believed, they arrived at present-day Khasi Jaintia Hills, Meghalaya, at the foothills of the Himalayas, about 120,000 years ago. They then spread out to Europe, Britain, Vietnam, China, Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, etc. Kindly visit the Heritage of Japan website where researcher Eileen Kawago names the War of Jantia Hills Meghalaya as one of the genetic sources of early Japanese. The name Japan comes from the Kasi phrase Ai Ja Pa, meaning give me rice father. This gradually shortened to Ja Pa, meaning rice father. Other Kasi stories tell of Panja, meaning ask for rice or Ja Pan, which literally translates into rice ask as the origin of the name Japan. From the Kasi Jantia Hills, the earlier settlers landed by boat at the place where stands now the most ancient Kashima Shrine and Kashima City, so named after Kasima or Kasimei or Mei Kasi meaning Kasi mother. Like their Kasi Jaintia ancestors who believed that they descended from heaven, the earliest Japanese Fudoki believed that the Kashima or Kasima celestial god descended from heaven. The Kasi have a sun goddess, Kasni. The Kasis have a rooster as their most important symbol. The Japanese too have a sun goddess, Ama Terasu, Omi Kami. The rooster is an auspicious symbol for Japanese Shinto, as among the Kasis. Kasis look at a river and say, Kawa. River in Japanese is Kawa, but pronounced Kawa. Kasis never had any written history, just oral history. Many secrets were passed down orally among a select few. Now with DNA technology, it is time to tell these ancient stories which would have been laughed at earlier. There are many, many more ancient secrets among the Kasis and Jantias of Meghalaya state lying at the foothills of the Himalayas. Remember, they arrived where they are at least 57,000 years ago. To put that 
the two contexts, the Hindu civilization is just 5,000 years old. Amanda Huang, in her writing, DNA profiles of Han Taiwanese also links the Taiwanese and the Japanese with the Kasi Austroasiatic people. After leaving Africa, after leaving Africa about 57,000 to 120,000 years ago, the Kasi spread all over the world. Kasis are matrilineal, part of the Y chromosome haplogroup which are all over Britain and parts of Europe. DNA now tell us they left Africa because of a severe drought, extreme heat and famine. At that very ancient time, there were just 5,000 to 10,000 Homo sapiens, our species in the world all only in Africa. The Kasis lived where the Cassia tree species exists in Africa. The tree derives its name from them. From this tree, the Kasis got their love and talent for herbal medicine. The Cassia tree is known for its medicinal properties. The Kasis left to search for water, cool weather, hills, mountains, meadows, and thickly forested lands. They left Africa and settled in the Kasi Hills at the foothills of the Himalayas where they still live today. Using these Kasi mountains as their base at least 57,000 years ago, they then proceeded to explore the whole known world in different batches. On arrival at a place where they liked to settle on, they erected over time stone circles, megaliths and monoliths all over the land to signify ownership of the land, to thank God Ublai or Ublai, and to promise Ublai that they would protect and be good stewards of the land. Every area initially they settled in would have plateaus, meadows, mountains, lots of rain and water, forests, cool weather, etc. 75,000 years ago, the super volcano Mount Toba of Sumatra, Indonesia erupted. There was widespread death and destruction. The sun disappeared for a long time because of the super eruption. Hence came the Kasi legend and story of the rooster. Immediately after that event, wherever the Kasis went, they dug deep and long caves. These caves took many generations to dig. They also to pros proceeded to grow wheat. The word Q or Ko in Kasi means wheat, hence the name Q Gardens. They set up the Sumerian, Babylonian and Phoenician kingdoms. Their traces are found in so many places. The famous ancient Greek historian Herodotus called Britain Kasi Teriades or Kasi Terides, the Kasi Tin Islands. They were all over Britain but were called by different names like Celtic, Kasi, Picts, Silures, Brigantes, Catuvelauni, etc. They mined tin, gold, silver, and grew wheat. The ancient name for Britain was Kadaulanong Perdany, or the Isle of Pridany or Perdany, meaning in Kasi, the Island of Wisdom. Perdany or Pridain means wisdom, deep thought in Kasi. Kasis often say Kapakad Kapadai, meaning deep thinking and wisdom. They also called Britain Bilat, after the white limestone cliffs. 
of Dover. The Emperor Julius Caesar in his writings names a Cassi tribe which fought against the Romans under their chief Cassi Velanus. Caesar landed around the Wansum Channel and crossed the River Thames at the Ford. Wansum in Cassi means come and bait. The Q or Kweho Gardens are named after the Kasi or Kasi harvest chant Hoi Q Hoi Go. Q or Go means wheat in Kasi, and the Kasi tribe is known to have grown wheat in Britain. The Kasi name for the third largest city of Roman Britain was Hangneru Labium, later shortened to Urula Mium and then to Verula Mium. In Kasi it means here too water has come out. La Mium means water has come out. Present day Colchester city was known in pre Roman times as Kamulo Don Um. Kamulo Don Um is a Kasi phrase meaning there is salt in the water. The old name of Thames in Kasi is Thamesu. The Thames in Kasi is pronounced in the same way as the English today pronounce Thames but with the addition of an S. The area around the Thames was then a low-lying area covered in water much more than now. Thames in Kasi means low-lying. Thamesu means low-lying area for bathing gradually became Thames. There is still standing an 18th century Stanmore obelisk at Brockley Hill at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Northwest London, commemorating the victory of King Cassi Velaunus, Prince of the Cassi, who led a confederation of British tribes, including the Cassi tribe, and defeated the Romans of Emperor Julius Caesar in 54 BC. Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Austin Waddell wrote about the Phoenician tin mines of Cassi Teridas or Cornwall. Tin which was used in many parts of the then world was partly obtained from the Phoenician tin mines of ancient Britain. Waddell writes that this western tin land was the country of the Kusaya or Kasi people, spelled K-A-S-S-I. It thus would account for the name Kasi Teridas, and Kasi is sometimes spelled with U in the cuneiform script. The Greek word for tin was Kasiteros, because it was the Phoenicians, otherwise known as the Kasi, who were famous for mining tin. In Britain, they were broadly known as the Celtic tribes. By the time of Julius Caesar's first invasion of Britain in 55 BC, the Kasi were mining tin, gold and silver, not only in Cornwall, but all along the coast of Britain. The Caucasus Mountains, or the Kafkasia, were called by Pliny the Elder in his book Natural History 77 to 79 AD by what the Greeks knew them, Kaukasis. The Scythians called the Caucasus Mountains Kroi Kasis. The Caspian Sea is named after the Kasis. The Kassite Kingdom of Babylonia, the Kashi Kingdom in northern India, the holy city of Varanasi was the ancient Kasi city of Kashi, the state of Kashmir, in which till today there are still a few Kasi Pora villages, the city of Kashan in ancient Persia, around which there was a Kasi tribe, the Kati tribe of Germany. The Cassis, Cassis or Cassi in France, the ancient Celtic, the Ecosai, the Cassi, the Picts, 
the Etruscans, Thracians, all descended from this most ancient Kasi tribe. They were matrilineal and erected monoliths wherever they lived for a long time. They also wore distinct tartan shawls. Today, the present-day Kasis still maintain their sacred forests as they did in ancient Europe and Britain. They refuse to sell their lands which have rich uranium deposits in spite of being offered huge bribes, have monoliths, stone circles and megaliths all over the Kasi hills, build awesome living root tree bridges, a must-see for every tourist. They dug the longest and deepest caves like the one in Khasi Hills and Vietnam. Krempuri is the world's longest sandstone cave. This they did because of their horrific experiences 74,000 to 75,000 years ago when the super volcano Mount Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia exploded violently. The Kasi still practice their Kasi traditional medicine, pass their surnames through the mothers, give their inheritance to the youngest daughter, still wear their tartan shawls which they have worn for thousands and thousands of years, still preserve the world's oldest living religion and have an ancient priesthood called Lingdo, similar to the ancient Druids of Europe and Britain. Above all, many, especially in the villages, live simple and happy lives. They love singing, compose great Khasi songs, but are equally adept at playing Western songs. Looking at the Khasis today, you wouldn't believe that from the Khasi hills was born some of the greatest civilizations of the world, the Sumerians, the Phoenicians, the Babylonians. Just like looking at Khmer Cambodians, who are, by the way, descended from the Khasis, you would not imagine that they set up the mighty Khmer Empire. They built the great, magnificent Angkor Wat, visited by millions of tourists annually. Many Khmer words come from the Khasi language. <coughs> Chingai in Khmer comes from the Khasi word Chingai, meaning far away in English. Tmei in Khmer comes from Tmei or Tmei in Khasi, meaning new in English. Mue in Khmer comes from the Khasi word Wei, meaning one in English. The great river, river Mekong was actually Mekong, meaning elder mother in Khasi, and so on. As a few early Khasis left Khasi hills, they found the river which flows through six countries on their journey. China, Vietnam, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. They named the river Mekong. That is why the Chinese still call the river as Mei Gong. Many Khasis and Jaintias have become Christians, converted by Welsh, Irish, English, Scottish, Germans, Italians, Spanish, French, Americans, and Maltese missionaries but a significant size of the population remain with their ancient Khasi religion, the Nyam Khasi or Nyam Tre, the oldest living religion in the world. Ask any Khasi, he will say that Cheddar Man looks like a typical Khasi religion. A recent facial construction of a 10,000 year old skeleton called the Cheddar Man has revealed a man with dark hair, brown, dark skin, brown hair, and blue eyes. Ancient DNA from Cheddar Man, a Mesolithic skeleton discovered in 1903 at Guff's Cave in Cheddar Gorge, Somerset, England, 
has helped London's Natural History Museum unveil ancient secrets. This is Britain's oldest complete human skeleton. The Guardian newspaper of London on 7th February 2018 wrote that the genome of Cheddar Man who lived 10,000 years ago suggests that he had blue eyes, dark skin and dark curly hair. On 23rd February 2018, BBC News said Cheddar Man DNA shows early Britain had dark skin and dark curly hair.